Recently, I've been looking into kinship terminology. It's basically what names people give to their family members. And of course, different languages have different ways to approach that. There are six major systems of kinship terminology around the world. They're pretty simplified, and most languages will add their own complexities. But they are a decent place to start when trying to understand how kinship varies. Only, a lot of the resources on kinship terminology tend to describe the results of the system, rather than the logic that system follows. So, I'm going to try and explain how these systems work. First off, you've got descriptive terms and classificatory terms. Descriptive terms only refer to one kind of relationship. In English, a sister is defined as a female relative of your generation with the same parents as you. But classificatory terms can refer to multiple kinds of relationship. An uncle can be your mother's brother, your mother's sibling's husband, your father's brother, or your father's sibling's husband. Basically any male relative of the generation above you who isn't your father. Most systems have a bit of both, but they differ by what traits they use to classify people, and on if those traits matter evenly across the family tree. Let's start with the simpler system, Hawaiian. It classifies all relatives by gender and generation. So all women of the generation preceding you are your mother, and all women of the same generation as you are your sister. That's it. Often there are behavioural and social distinctions between the mother who gave birth to you and your other mothers, but they still all get the same word. But let's say the nuclear family is important in your society, and you'd like to distinguish between your lineal relatives, who are in the direct line of descent, and collateral relatives, like aunts and cousins, who aren't. In a system that prioritises this, lineal relatives get more descriptive terms, collateral relatives tend to get more classificatory. So your mother is your mother, but all other female relatives of her generation are your aunt. This is an Inuit kinship system, where generation, gender, and distance all matter. English is an example of this kind of system. There are exceptions. For example, we don't distinguish cousins based on gender. But the Inuit system is the one that most closely matches English's list of priorities. We can get more descriptive though. If we distinguish maternal and paternal lines, we can distinguish between a mother's mother and a father's mother, and between a father's sister's daughter and a mother's brother's daughter. In this system, every kind of relationship has its own descriptive term, distinguishing by generation, gender, maternal and paternal, and collateral and lineal. This is the Sudanese kinship system, and it's the most descriptive of the six classic groups. Systems get a bit more complicated when matrilineages and patrilineages get added in. These diagrams don't usually have grandparents, but I'm going to add some in and hopefully that'll make these systems clearer. Let's start with the Iroquois system. In the generation above you, this system classifies male relations of the paternal line together. So your father's brothers are your fathers, and female relatives of the maternal line, so your mother's sisters are also your mothers. When your mother's sister has children, well, she's your mother, so her children are your siblings. And the same goes for your father's brother. He's your father, so his daughter is your sister. In anthropological terms, these are referred to as parallel cousins. But your mother's brother is your uncle, and your father's sister is your aunt. Their children are your cousins. In anthropological terms, these are both cross-cousins. Often, in these kinds of systems, marrying a cross-cousin isn't considered incest, and might even be encouraged. To the point where in one language, a man's word for his female cross-cousin is the same as the word for wife. So, this system always distinguishes generation and gender, but instead of distinguishing based on distance, it distinguishes based on who you share matrilineages and patrilineages with. So it's common in societies that prioritise either or both of those. You also get asymmetric systems, where kin are distinguished by different traits depending on where they are in the family. In the Omaha system, relations who share the patrilineage are distinguished by generation and gender. Similar to the Iroquois system, men of the parental generation who share a patrilineage are given the same term. So your father's brother is also your father, and since he's your father, his children are your siblings. Your father's sister gets her own term, and her children are your cross-cousins. But on the maternal line, there's a different system that kicks in. It can appear kind of confusing, but there are basically two important rules. One, generation doesn't matter. 
all women are mothers and all men are uncles, but your mother's children are your siblings. So let's say your mother has a brother, he's your uncle, he has two children, a son and a daughter. His son is your uncle too, because of the first rule, generation doesn't matter. His daughter is also your mother. But if his daughter has children, the second rule kicks in. Since his daughter is your mother, her children are your siblings. In a patrilineal society, this is pretty useful, because everyone in your mother's patrilineage gets the same term. The Crow system is very similar, it's basically the matrilineal version. It's more descriptive on the maternal side, and more classificatory on the paternal side. So these are the basic things that kinship systems can distinguish between. There can also be added complexities. For example, in English we would distinguish between blood relatives and relatives by marriage, but only for our lineal relatives. It would sound weird to distinguish between an aunt and an aunt-in-law. In Mandarin, an extremely descriptive language, people of the same generation can be distinguished by age. For example, your mother's older sister and younger sister get different terms. And in some languages, the term you use for someone might depend on if you're the same gender or not. And there are also more complicated systems out there. But now we're really getting into the stuff that varies massively between languages, so I'll leave it there. A kinship diagram on its own doesn't really tell you much about how a society views families, but if you look beyond the surface, you can figure out what systems are at play in society and how they choose to construct kinship.